Just watch this trailer for Mortal Online 2. It's a super cinematic shot with the camera flying alongside an arrow through a forest, then up through the inner spiral stairs of a tower, then wrapping around a slow motion jump attack as this bare chested warrior leaps through the air, blade drawn back toward this dual axe wielding armoured up guy. Epic music plays, we prepare for conflict. It just feels so thrilling. And after watching this, you'd be forgiven for expecting a fast paced action hack and slash game. Now here's some gameplay. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Drive Hayes. A while ago, I featured Mortal Online 1 on my worst MMO ever series. I criticised the obtuse and hard to understand nature of the early game, the brutally unfair full loot PvP, and how without players the game world was a barren husk with nothing to do, because the developers had shifted the responsibility of providing meaningful content away from themselves and onto the players and called it a day. And every Mortal Online fan got mad at me and left long comments about how it was a unique experience and one of the best MMOs ever and they had a fantastic time and I was a stupid little crybaby who should run crying back to Skyrim and leave the real hardcore MMOs to the real hardcore MMO players. Now, the developers of Mortal Online obviously saw my video and decided the most logical thing to do would be to give me a Mortal Online 2 beta key and ask me to play the game and make a video. This happened and went about as well as you'd expect, so join me as we explore Mortal Online 2, or more accurately, we replay Mortal Online 1 with better graphics. Look, honestly, asking me to review a full loot on death hardcore open world PvP based MMO with no story, no plot and no map is like asking someone with a peanut allergy to review a jar of peanut butter. It might might be brilliant, but everyone involved is going to have a bad time. Before we begin, consider dropping a like on the video or subscribing to the channel. Ring the bell so you don't miss a single future video. As always, a big thank you to my supporters on Patreon and Twitch, who make all my content possible. More on how you can support at the end. Right, let's begin. Mortal Online 2 is an MMORPG currently in early access. They recently had a stress test and are now handing out beta keys. So remember, everything you see in this video is in early beta stage. It may change and it may improve, apart from the Steam banner looking like Drax, that's probably going to stay. So let's make our character. Unlike most MMOs, character creation really, really matters here. Your chosen bloodline, where you can select your grandparents' heritage, your race, your age, your height, everything affects your potential stat caps. Now racial bonuses and passive buffs I can understand, but Mortal Online 2 takes it a step further. Older characters have more potential mana but lower strength. Taller characters can carry more. Fatter characters have more hit points. So if you want to have the option of reaching maximum intelligence and being better at magic or having maximum potential hit points, you're going to need to play a fat character. Personally, I dislike this system. I've spoken before about how aesthetic character creation choices shouldn't affect mechanical gameplay choices, but hey, if you disagree with me, and many people in that video did, here is the game for you. So Mortal Online 1 started you off in a small tutorial city called Haven, where you could speak to some skill trainers, learn the basics, fight some zombies in a graveyard, and then leave to the mainland, whereas Mortal Online 2 starts you off in a small tutorial city called Haven, where you can speak to some skill trainers, learn the basics, fight some zombies in a graveyard, and then leave to the mainland, but this time you can choose which city you want to go to. My main issue with Mortal Online 1 was how little direction a new player is given, but I guess that was kind of the point. So I'm going to set my personal preferences aside side and focus on what the game does well relative to what it's actually trying to achieve. The target audience for this game is not me. It's players who want a brutally unforgiving world with obtuse and tangled systems that you need to work out for yourself with no main guiding thread beyond it's a harsh world, try to survive. The game is completely first person. Pressing tab brings up the overlay menu. Everything is set out the same as Mortal Online 1. Character equipment and profile shown in a window. Tabs to cycle through for your skills and local reputation within factions. Inventory 
inventory shown in boxes. Honestly, if you've played Mortal Online 1, you will recognize everything here because it's literally just a graphically updated version of the same game mechanics. And you likely will have played Mortal Online 1 because their target demographic is people who played Mortal Online 1. While in Haven, you get a map. One side shows the landmass, the other side shows the local city, but there's no player icon or marker, and this is the only time you will get a map. Because once you leave Haven, the main game has no maps at all. No world map, no mini-map. Navigation is done entirely through memory, and the world is massive. In the character system, you can choose which attributes you want to gain experience and level up, or lock them off from gaining experience, or make it so the skill actually decreases. You have a limited pool of experience points to draw from as you level up, so choosing what you are going to put those points into early is best. This is one of those games where the best way to play is to already know what to do. Mortal Online 1 and 2 are both very punishing games for new players if you don't have a plan. The skill menu is a very, very complex tree of multiple specific skills, categorised and then subcategorised, and we'll see the true complexity of this later when I try and make a simple weapon. Run around a bit, jump, land, which levels my running, jumping and landing skills. If you've not played Mortal before, know that you level everything, including swimming, jumping, landing, breathing, breathing, reading, and resting, which you level by sitting down and doing literally nothing. The higher your resting skill, the faster you regain HP and stamina while resting, so if you want to be really good at this game, you'll dedicate a lot of time to sitting doing nothing. With the weapon equipped, you draw it by pressing X, then hold left click to attack. Combat is direction and distance based. If you hold left click and drag your mouse up, you will strike from above. Same for dragging left and right, and dragging it down is a stab. You can see the central aiming icon and then a small marker showing which side you're about to hit from. The direction is a nice touch because it matches in with the directional blocking, which you do by holding right click, but the distance from the target is still an annoying feature because judging depth in a first person game is tricky and sometimes the enemy just runs right up to you, meaning you'll end up smacking them with the handle and doing a lot less damage. I attack this pig, which levels my combat stand aggressive skill, and my sword skill, and oh thank god these local guards run over to help otherwise I might have been in trouble. My map tells me there's a graveyard to the east of the city I'm in, so let's head that way, see if this works the same as it does in Mortal Online 1. Now here's how graveyards work and how they tie into the economy. Mortal Online 1 and 2 are MMORPGs that don't feature any storyline or quests or overarching plot. They are strictly virtual worlds with skills, crafting and other players. The entire gameplay loop is completely based around player interaction and PvP with skilling added. The majority of weapons, armour and potions in the game are all player made using resources found in the wild. Graveyards found in every major city are the game's source of easy money and resources. Inside every graveyard are zombies. Killing zombies gives you small amounts of gold and zombie heads which you can sell to a local merchant and slowly build up enough money to buy crafting books to make your own stuff. Grinding zombies in graveyards matters because Mortal Online 1 and 2 are both full loot PvP with all your items dropped on death and you will die a lot. So the majority of the gameplay loop is kill zombies for basic gear and money, buy skill books, make better gear, go on adventure, find resources resources, make better gear, go and kill other players, and when you finally get killed, return to the graveyard grind and start the process all over again. So you can indeed do whatever you want in Mortal Online 2, provided what you want to do is kill zombies, sell their body parts, and then grind crafting skills. To be fair, the game does look lovely. The graphics settings are extensive. I've dropped it down to medium and it's still really nice to adventure around. Mortal Online 2 is a good looking game, no doubt about that. Great enemy models, lovely light rays, very nice nighttime daytime ambience and cycle, and as we'll see later, impressive and imposing city design, even though that does have some uncanny valley flaws to it. After a hard time fighting, I have a rest, level up my resting skill and just shove my whole arm through my knee. I ask in the help chat about the mainland and I learn a bit more. The mainland mass is called Nave, and every major city has a bank, but the banks are all city specific. 
So if you store something in the bank in one city, then travel to another city, you won't be able to access it from that new city's bank. You might like the sound of this hardcore system, but personally I dislike it. I like being able to access my items wherever I am in the world. Haven is great to learn, but the game prides itself on being hardcore, and I think it's similar enough to Mortal Online 1 that I'm getting the basics. So let's experience this game for what it is. Let's leave and go and explore the mainland. I will head to the city of Tindram because I want to see how it's changed since Mortal Online online one. So I teleport over there, and honestly, it's not changed too much. The layout is different, but it's still a Greek-style city with massive open plazas, extremely clinical and clean buildings, regimented measured placement of all assets, and an overwhelming sense of being way too big. This game does open spaces really well, but it doesn't fill them with anything interesting. The cities in this game rely on players to feel real. There are a few guards walking around, but no NPCs living life, no citizens, no workers. It feels like a very artificial video game city. And I know it is a video game, but playing both Mortal Online 1 and 2, being in a city feels odd. It feels wrong. Because the wilderness is so realistic and the cities are so... Strange. This isn't a fantasy city. This is created in such a utilitarian way that it's painfully obvious at all times it's just a setting for a video game, a means to an end. It's not a living, breathing city. There's too much space. There's too much perfection. There's too much beauty for a game aiming to be so brutal. So remember, no world map, no mini-map. I hope you are good at remembering directions. I find a building with a load of crafting tables in and make a mental note of where it is. Then I go and explore the Grand Cathedral because honestly the model looks epic. Again, I think it's a bit too grand and a bit too clean for the horrible harsh world they're trying to be, but it's impressive nonetheless. Also, it's not a skybox. This is a full 3D model. Fall down some steps and take some falling damage. By doing so, I unlock the active regeneration skill because it's the first time I've taken damage and therefore refilled my health and everything in this game unlocks when you actually do it for the first time. This means resting now levels up my rest, regeneration, active regeneration and endurance skills. Four separate skill lines are being leveled by just sitting down. The graphics of the city themselves, the actual fidelity, is lovely. These sunbeams cresting over the steps look gorgeous, but the city feels artificial. It's too perfect, too clean, too big, too wide. It's too heavenly for a game selling itself as a hardcore bloody MMO. So maybe it's time to leave the city behind, journey out into the big wide world, forge my own destiny, chart my own path. I wonder what awaits me. Maybe I'll slay a dragon. Well, no, I can't do that because there's no dragons. Maybe I'll rise to the top of a thieves guild. Well, no, because there's no NPC guilds. Maybe I'll uncover a plot to assassinate the king. Well, again, no, because there's no king. Maybe I'll stab a pig in the arse. Yeah. Yeah, that's an adventure you can have. So journeying outside the city is dangerous. There are other players, probably, and maybe bandits. And I'm badly equipped, so I need to go to the graveyard and farm some zombies for drops to gear up. So let's do this and have a read of some early access reviews and see what people are saying about the game so far. There's no Steam reviews as it's in early access, but YouTuber ESO put out a glowing review in the video Why is nobody talking about this new MMO? So Medieval called it the King of Sandbox PvP games, and Kira TV called it the most unique MMORPG. Well, that's what the thumbnail says. Now, I like Kira TV, but I have to disagree with that thumbnail, because Mortal Online 2 is basically Mortal Online 1. It's closer to a graphical upgrade than a full-on sequel. So it's had some pretty positive press, and people are pretty hyped for it, but maybe those people like directionless sandbox full loot PvP survival games with harsh worlds and badly explained crafting systems. Whereas it's not personally my thing, I like it when a game explains systems to me and gives me some form of goal beyond exist, but hey, whatever floats your boat. While killing zombies, I get a little bit overwhelmed, try to run, but being taken to 1 HP makes you stagger so your opponent can do a cool killing blow, and dying means you drop everything and become a ghost. While in ghost form, you move super fast and must return to a priest to be resurrected. Because of this, whenever someone tells me Mortal Online 2 is a brutally realistic MMO with hardcore mechanics and focuses on believable grounded gameplay, I'm going to ask them where the zombies and the resurrection fits in. The actual resurrection animation though is really cool. Watching your own skeleton, then muscles, then skin all regrow looks terrific. 
Once human again, you can go back and pick up all your belongings, including your own corpse. I then discover you can use the butchery skill on your own corpse to get a stack of human meat and some human skin. So I guess while the game won't hold your hand, in a roundabout way you can hold it yourself. I wonder if I can use my own skin in weapon or armour crafting. That'd be cool. Nighttime rolls around and the cathedral looks even more awesome. While I might not think the overly expansive city suits the tone of the game and is incredibly eerie, I can still appreciate and admire the quality of the assets they're using. Now I return to the crafting station and here begins the ode of learning to craft something. A system so obtusely complex for new players, it's almost as if the game doesn't want people to learn it. I know there will be Mortal Online 1 veterans and 2 beta testers watching this insufferably saying how you need to read the systems and figure it out and it's easy when you know how, but I'd just like to show you how this game takes no steps toward helping new players play it. It's almost as if it's deliberately being awkward and it's making playing it a badge of honour and the game knows that by being irritating to get into, it creates a smug little clique of people who understand and laugh at those who don't. So here we go. Interacting with the crafting station shows nothing. No recipes, no materials, no levels, no suggestions, no clue as to what to do next. So I head over to the nearby NPC and I buy a book about two-handed weapon crafting, which I can't read because I don't yet know basic weapon crafting. There's nothing on the book tooltip telling me that this is a sequel or an advanced book to something else. There's no flowchart of where I start or finish, so I go and buy basic weapon crafting, hoping it's the first, and read it, which it is. Reading a book instantly gives me the reading skill and equips the book to my reading slot. Reading a skill book instantly unlocks that specific skill line and that's it, it's done with. But you do get a slight bonus thing. The book remains equipped for a few hours and gives you residual experience over time. You can only be reading one residual experience book at a time. Once you've got the skill line unlocked, if you want to unlock another skill line or read another book, you must remove the book you're currently reading. But doing this destroys the book. So you're actually not really incentivized to do that. The game wants you to work through one book at a time. And books cost silver, so learning a lot of skills very quickly is a very expensive thing to do and you'll be missing out on all of that residual experience. With basic weapon crafting and two-handed crafting unlocked, I figure I'll need some raw materials to work with. So let's return to the wild and try to find some. Now to chop a tree, you do not need an axe. And to mine a rock, you do not need a pickaxe. You simply need a melee weapon. You start with a sword and a torch, and according to the help chat, the torch has more durability and is better for woodcutting. So, I chop this tree down with my torch. Then I mine some stone with my torch. Truly the most hardcore of MMOs. With some wood and stone collected, let's try making something. So I've read basic weapon crafting, but interacting with the crafting bench still doesn't show me anything. Same with the bow crafting station, the armor station, they don't list anything, there's no recipes, there's no indication of what I should do. So I check my skill list, and I see in my skill list, while I do know soft armor, because I bought the soft armor book, I don't know any specific styles. Think of it like this. Think of the skill tree as gates you need to pass through, buying the skill book to pass each gate. And only when you buy the final book in an actual run of skills, do you see anything appear in the list. Knowing that I need to buy a lot more skill books before I can even begin crafting, I return to the graveyard to farm for drops when a kind player, a guy called Smallest, walks up to me and actually says something. Quick accept. Yeah, I picked this up from killing those guys, but it'll help you uh, survive a bit longer. Enjoy. If you want better stuff, I can make better stuff. Just come find me. Yeah, I can make way better stuff than that. that ki that's kind of garbage, because it's just what you get from killing these guys. But uh, that's all you. I just... you're naked. Seems the game has localized voice chat. Press and hold T to talk. He trades me some basic armor. Apparently the zombies in the graveyard drop it. I just haven't found it yet. And then heads off to adventure. I equip it and get back to killing. And look, I do get the appeal of this game. 
It's a sandbox. It's a virtual world for players to exist within. It's slow, it's difficult, and it's unforgiving, and that is the challenge. That's the main gameplay loop. In Mortal Online 2, it's not about being the High King or the Archmage or even a legendary hero. It's about surviving against all odds. It's not so much a game itself as it is a social interaction facilitator. Mortal Online 2 is much more EverQuest and much less Warcraft. The people you meet can and will talk to you. Some will kill you, some will help you. And ultimately, it's the people who will make or break your gameplay experience. I do, however, find this kind of design risky. Relying on people to provide content means that once the player base, or potential player base, even gets a hint of the idea that your game isn't doing well, they won't play. And this turns into a death spiral because no players means, as you've relied on players for content, no content. People keep telling me about the amazing memories they had in Mortal Online 1, and it's always about PvP, guilds, people, battleground, clans or friends. It's social interaction with some crafting. That's what this is. It's a fantasy second life, a harsh world, and if that's what you're after, you'll find a lot to love here. But remember, logging in and playing Mortal Online 1 or 2 isn't about questing or adventuring or becoming a hero. It's about survival, pure and simple. It's about carefully scratching out some level of existence and maybe either fame or infamy among the player base. It's a survival game with a persistent world and extremely punishing death mechanics. If you think this is what makes an MMORPG hardcore, then yes, it's hardcore. That doesn't mean it will appeal to everyone. It doesn't make it inherently better or worse than any other design philosophy. Mortal Online 2 knows its audience, and that audience is people who played and miss Mortal Online 1. With enough zombies killed, I continue my quest to build a two-handed warhammer by buying the two-handed wooden handle craft book, which I can't read because I need to learn the one-handed crafting first. Nothing tells you this. Return to the graveyard for even more money. Crafting is the main focus of this game, so you'd think they'd be super excited to show it off and share it and help new players understand it, but no, they keep it as vague as they can so solo players who do understand it can act all insufferably smug about it. There's nothing better official about making your system deliberately hard to learn or to understand. I then see the global chat. Some players are complaining they made a character that looked cool to them, but suddenly realise they've gimped their potential intelligence cap due to not building the physical traits correctly and are complaining they'll have to start all over again. Okay, so now I've bought the crafting skill books, all of them, every book I could possibly need, and I finally, finally have some actual recipes showing up in the crafting interface, but how on earth does this work? I need to make a handle first, with a core material and a wrap material. So I experiment, just dragging things around until I discover I can use wood as the core material and my own flayed skin as the wrap. And then I can also use wood as the core of the hammer head. So with the blueprint seemingly done and the icon on the screen showing it's ready, I click craft and nothing happens. The chat box tells me I've not got the skills to make this weapon. But what it doesn't say is what skills I'm missing. And when I hover the cursor over the handle I've chosen, or the items I'm using, or the hammerhead, it shows my skill level in that tooltip. There's nothing telling me what I'm missing here. It doesn't say what skill level I need to be or what skill I don't have, it just says what I am. I don't know what else the game needs me to do. I know the recipes, I have the skills, I have the materials, and I still can't craft the weapon. This happens with the armor station, the recipes show up, the materials are added, and the crafting fails. Nothing on the crafting interface is actually letting me know what I need to do to achieve the thing it says I'm able to achieve. So I ask in the world chat what I'm doing wrong. And it seems that not only do I need to have bought all the correct skill books and unlocked all the skill lines needed to create the handle and the weapon head, but I also need to buy all the skill books and unlock the lore skills relating to the materials I am trying to use. So I run around until I find a library, made quicker with the help of the world chat, and then I find all the skill trainers and just look at this. This is what I mean when I say this game feels like a video game. All the trainers are just lined up in neat rows. This is so utilitarian, so uninspired. As hardcore as Mortal Online 2 might be, the actual design of the city, the NPC layout and the placement is so boring. You've got this amazing trailer and these awesome screenshots of a fantastical adventure game and then you've got all the skill trainers just lined up silently in a single empty room in a big empty city. Honestly, this is the kind of design, the kind of NPC placement I'd expect from some kind of vaporware or shovelware or a college student's first attempt at a game. So back to the graveyard again to grind for even more money while the global chat flames me relentlessly for not knowing all of this 
instantly. And finally, I have enough to buy everything I need and this is what you need to do. To unlock access to a skill line, you first need to buy the first book, then the following books. And only when you buy the final book in a line do you actually gain the ability to work with or make that thing. So to make a two-handed hammer from basic wood and human skin, two of the easiest to find materials, you must do the following in the following order. And remember, every time you buy a new book, you must discard the old one, which means you're losing the residual experience you could have gained had you have been patient. Buy the weapon crafting book to unlock the weapon crafting line. Then buy the handle and pole crafting book. Then buy the one-handed handle crafting line. Then buy the two-handed handle crafting line. This allows us to make the handle we need. For the head, you'll need to buy the weapon crafting book, then buy blunt weapon crafting, then buy blunt head crafting. Now these two skill lines allow you to add materials onto the crafting station interface and attempt to craft the item, but the attempt will fail unless you've also unlocked the lore lines for the materials you're using. So now we need to do the following. Buy the material lore book from this vendor, then buy the botany skill line book, then buy the dendrology book, then grey wood lore, that's the wood material. To be able to work with skin in crafting, you must buy the material law book, then animal materials, then from this other vendor, you must buy the mammal skin book, then you must buy the leather book, then the skin book. Doing all that unlocks the use of skin as a crafting material. So all in all, to craft a two-handed hammer from basic wood and human skin, the two easiest to find materials, you will need to buy six books for the weapon schematics and eight books for the material law skills. That is 14 skill books needed for a simple weapon. But nowhere do any of the game's crafting interfaces or crafting flowcharts or tutors tell you that this is what you must do. You must work it out yourself by opening the skill list, following the progression skill flowchart through and work backwards. I try to make the hammer and it seems I have no skin in my inventory. Not sure where that's gone, so I bank my items and die to a zombie to generate some more. Then I try and craft the item, but now it tells me I need more wood to craft this specific weapon. Look, nowhere does it say how much wood you will need before you start. The whole system lets you start something and only tells you why you failed at the end if you fail. This isn't a good crafting interface for new players. I know you're aiming at the hardcore who already understand, but making your systems simple to understand for new players is sort of essential for long-term survival as a game. I should not need to watch a YouTube video to understand what to do. I get some more wood by smacking my torch against the tree, and then finally, finally we make the Warhammer. And to be fair, it does look great. So now to go and test it out on some zombies. It is worse than the sword you start with. Right, it's time to fly the nest. I've got armor, I've got weapon, I've got time. Let's go adventure and explore. Let's go see the big world yonder. So with a final glance back at the magnificent cathedral, I set out. Mortal Online 2 is a sandbox PvP MMO. And just as a sandbox would be in real life, it's got all the tools to allow you to build, create, meet, and socialize. I could have picked five different handle designs for this hammer and three different heads. I don't think it would have made a huge difference to actual gameplay, but I had the choice because player choice is a big thing here. This game is aimed at people who want a second life inside an expansive world, a life focused on bettering themselves, chilling in town, crafting rare items, chatting with friends or killing other players. In Mortal Online 2, the gameplay doesn't just happen around the other players, it is the other players. The world is uncaring of you. There's no fast travel, no mark and recall, no safety outside the city walls beyond what you create for yourself. The game doesn't care if you know how to craft or not. The designers don't care about giving you a map or showing you the site. The NPCs don't care about talking to you. The only part of Mortal Online 2 that feels anything about you at all, for better or worse, are the other players. You will learn to craft by asking other people or you'll be insulted for not knowing. You'll learn a city layout by asking for a guide, or someone will deliberately lose you on purpose. You'll find a guild for asking for one, or people will ambush you. You'll find a purpose by seeing what you can do in the service or harm of others. Mortal Online 2 is a community creation engine with a zombie killing minigame attached to it. My main gripe with this whole setup is mechanics and systems that are reliant on a player community are extremely risky, because player communities are often not that great at creating engaging content. Yeah, you may be part of the horde that sweeps across the land and has a terrific time killing everyone, but you could just as easily be a part of the group that got killed and stolen from. And you may scream, that's the price you pay for playing a hardcore game, you snowflake, and you're right. 
But I'm looking at this from a longevity point of view. Games that rely on player-created content and PvP in a consistent world don't often survive that long with that bigger player base precisely because of how, for one player to have fun, another must suffer. I'm not saying you're wrong if that's what you enjoy, but you must realise if your enjoyment comes at the expense of another, you're not creating a sustainable gaming environment for new players. Look at almost every single PvP-focused MMO. Eventually they fall down to the hardcore players, and new players do not feel comfortable or welcome joining. I managed to climb this mountain by just spamming jump and resting every time my stamina runs out. It takes about 30 minutes, and at the top there's a lookout tower surveying the land, and below in the distance the rolling hills and dense forests stretch over the horizon. Mortal Online 2 is a vast world, an uncaring world. There's no great evil threatening the land, no conspiracy to uncover, no quest in need of a hero. What there is, are people. Players fumbling around, learning, failing, becoming frustrated at how obtuse and cryptic the crafting systems are, and being annoyed at how min-maxing means re-rolling, talking and forming alliances and deciding they hate the other city purely because it's not the city they started at. Mortal Online 2 is a survival game, where your strongest defence is other people. You won't level quickly or smoothly, and when you die, you'll lose it all and be forced to rebuild, but that's the price you pay for total freedom. If you liked Mortal Online 1, you'll like Mortal Online 2, because honestly it's just more of the same with nicer graphics. Thanks for the beta tester code, but I'm not really into survival games, because I don't like knowing that in a permanent world, as an MMORPG is, everything I own is temporary. A band of roving, high-level players could come along and take everything I've got simply because they wanted to, and I'd have very little defence from this happening. If your game world is permanent, but your player experience and your player possessions are temporary, eventually it's going to frustrate me out of playing it. And when I see these bandit NPCs, which are the first NPCs I've seen about an hour of wilderness exploring, they kill me. And now I'm a ghost, miles from anywhere, naked, poor, and needing to travel in at least 30 minutes any direction to resurrect. So, as much as I can see the appeal of this game, I am not the demographic you're trying to appeal to. If you're watching this video and thinking, finally, a game where I can just exist in a harsh, horrible world, then great, I get the appeal. I do understand the attraction of a sandbox that focuses on players instead of computer-controlled bosses, but I worry that when a game designer relies on the player base to drive content and interaction, they are always just one player exodus away from an empty world and a dying populace. You know, like happened with Mortal Online 1. I hope many people are able to create awesome memories in Mortal Online 2, and years from now, when I make a worst MMO ever Mortal Online 2 video, there are even more comments telling me how great the game used to be. But for now, I will leave the hardcore MMOs to the hardcore players. I think I've got far too many quests to hand in elsewhere. Cheers for watching. What do you think about Mortal Online 1 or 2? Let me know in the comments below, and another massive thank you to my Patreon supporters and Twitch subs for making my videos possible. You can support the Patreon from only £1 a month. Check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter and our Discord channel, and as always, have a great day.